Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our webinar today on resource mapping, enhancing financial capability outcomes. My name is Michael Rausch, and I'm the director of the Real Economic Impact Network at the National Disability Institute. I'm glad you have joined us for this conversation on resource mapping, um, one of my favorite activities to do, um, and uh, I, I enjoy working with um, partners across the country um, to put a resource map together to really be able to enhance the um, outcomes of the individuals that we work with. I would like to say thank you to our sponsor, Bank of America, who has been a longtime supporter of the Real Economic Impact Network at the National Disability Institute, and through their support, today's webinar is being sponsored by them. Before we get started, I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Nakia Matthews, who will go over our housekeeping tips for today's webinar. Nakia? Thank you, Michael, and good afternoon, everyone. The audio for today's webinar is being broadcast through your computer. Please make sure that your speakers are turned on or your headphones are plugged in. You can control the audio broadcast via the audio broadcast panel. If you accidentally close this panel, you can reopen it by going to the communicate menu at the top of your screen and choosing audio broadcast. If you do not have sound capabilities on your computer, or if you prefer to listen by phone, you can dial the toll or toll-free number you see here. And please note that you do not need to enter an attendee ID. I am also going to paste that information into the chat box for those who need it. Real-time captioning is provided during this webinar. The captions can be found in the Meteor Viewer Panel, which appears in the lower right corner of the webinar platform. If you do not see the captions, you may need to open the Media Viewer Panel by selecting the Media Viewer button in the upper right corner of the webinar platform. If you would like to make the Media Viewer Panel larger, you can do so by minimizing some of the other panels like chat or Q&A, and if you do not need the captions, you are certainly free to minimize the media viewer panel. We will have time for questions at the end of the webinar. Please use the chat box or the Q&A box to send questions during the webinar to either me, um, I'm listed as NDI admin, or Michael Rausch, and we will direct those questions accordingly during the Q&A portion. If you are listening by phone only and not logged into the web portion, you may also submit questions by emailing them directly to Michael at mrausch at ndi-inc.org. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and that the materials and video archives will be placed on the NDI website at realeconomicimpact.org. Finally, if you experience any technical difficulties during the webinar, please use the chat box to send a message to me, NDI admin, or you may also email me directly at nmatthews at ndi-inc.org. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Michael. Thank you, Nikia. Um, it looks like our slides haven't advanced, so... Um, I will advance. So Nakia, um, if you could just um, let me know that um, the slide that you see right now is National Disability Institute, um, because as you were speaking, the slides did not advance on my end. It's looking good. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Nakia, for all the housekeeping tips. We appreciate that. Um, so for those of you who are new, um, to our webinar series, I just want to share with you a little bit of information about the National Disability Institute before we get started. So the mission of the National Disability Institute is to drive social impact to build a better economic future for people with disabilities and their families. Um, at the National Disability Institute, um, we affect change through a variety of services um, that we provide to the community to help to build the better economic future for persons with disabilities and their families. At the National Disability Institute, 
we do have the Real Economic Impact Network. If you're not a member, I hope that you will join us. Um, join us uh, and feel free to join the Real Economic Impact Network. And the Real Economic Impact Network is an alliance of organizations and individuals who are dedicated to advancing the economic empowerment of people with disabilities. The Real Economic Impact Network consists of more than 4,500 members located throughout the United States, and actually we have members located in all 50 states, including Puerto Rico. The members of the network include nonprofits, community tax coalitions, asset development organizations, financial education initiatives, corporations, and private sector businesses, federal, state, local governments, and agencies, and individuals and their families with disabilities. Again, all members are joining forces to embrace, promote, and pursue access to and the inclusion of people with disabilities in the economic mainstream. If you want to learn more about the REI network, please go to www.realeconomicimpact.org and there on the homepage, you will um, find a spot that says join REI network. Um, so I hope that you, if you're not a member, that you will consider to join and it is free. It's free to join. Um, so please, um, please join us. <clears throat> so today's webinar. So today's webinar is looking at resource mapping and looking at the positive impact that resource mapping has and the work that we are all doing to build the financial stability or financial well-being of the individuals we serve, whether they're individuals with or without disabilities. So we're going to look at what is resource mapping and we're going to define it. We're also going to look at um, view the larger picture of supports and resources that are available to help individuals improve their financial well-being. We're also going to provide you tools to help you identify key resources in your community um, that can help you com complete a resource map if you have not done so already. <clears throat> so as we work with different groups, oftentimes people say, what is a resource map? Um, and recently we received a lot of technical assistance questions um, specifically on resource mapping and how do we create a resource map? Um, those of you that know me know that I'm a practitioner at heart. I come from the field. Um, and. Um, so we've simplified the process um, in creating a resource map um, because uh, in our tool that we're going to share with you, um, you'll see is a very simple tool, but it definitely has a huge impact. So it's a tool that we have used personally. It's also a tool that we've seen um, uh, countless other communities use to get started to create a resource map for their area. So what is resource mapping? So the plain and simple of it is that resource mapping offers a strategy that can help leverage a community and an organization's capacity to further serve individuals. Oftentimes as we're serving individuals, um, they might have a barrier to achieving financial stability. There may be a barrier to employment. And sometimes those barriers may not be something that our organization offers for us to be able to help the individual overcome those barriers. And so resource mapping allows us to leverage all of those community resources um, to be able to, to help the individual um, achieve their ultimate goal. So why is resource mapping important? So resource mapping is important because for a variety of reasons. Most importantly, it enhances cross collaboration between agencies working towards the same goal of economic self sufficiency. Just as I gave the example that um, my agency, my organization might offer this service, but 
I have several clients who have this specific barrier to for them to achieve their ultimate goal, but this agency offers it. And so it opens that door for the cross collaboration, but it also opens the door for us to be able to share a variety of resources. The other important piece of resource mapping is that it enhances referrals to other organizations that can assist an individual in achieving their goals. And one of the key pieces that we emphasize about resource mapping is that it creates an opportunity for soft referrals versus hard referrals. And before I go on to talk about some of the uh, other important pieces, I just want to take a minute to define what we have. We defined a soft referral versus a hard referral. So a soft referral is that it's a soft handoff. I oftentimes say it's a soft landing. And so that is where a referral with another organization that the counselor, case manager, or employment specialist has a key contact with at another, at the, another organization to refer the individual to, okay? And I'll give you an example in just a minute. A hard referral is a referral where another organization that the counselor case manager or employment specialist has no contact with or relationship with when referring the individual to that organization. So let me give you an example of a soft referral. So let's say that I am working with a client and his name is um, Peter. And uh, Peter, ha a barrier to his uh, to employment for him is transportation, and he really wants to get a car um, to be able to help him get to work. So my agency does not provide transportation support. So I call up my friend Ellen, who works with the local Ways to Work program that helps individuals um, uh, obtain uh, a vehicle to get to work. And so I call up Ellen to say, Ellen, orientation times, do you still have openings in the program? I have an individual that I think qualifies for your program. Before I send him over, I just want to make sure. So Ellen says yes. Great. So I refer, P, refer Peter over to this program to be able to um, learn more about the Ways to Work program. So an example of a hard referral would be, I don't know anybody over at the local Ways to Work program, but I got a flyer in my office, and this flyer happens to be several months old and I give it to Peter, and Peter goes to that location, and that program is no longer being offered, or they have no more openings for that program. And so I didn't know that that program didn't have any more. I have a flyer in my office that I've been distributing to various individuals um, to be able to go to. So I had no contact with that organization except for that referral. And with resource mapping, why this is so important um, that it helps us create soft and hard referrals is because when Peter, uh, if it was a hard referral and I gave Peter this flyer and he went there and they said, no, we, we don't offer this program anymore, what's Peter going to do? Peter's going to be back in my office and be upset. I used my bus pass or a piece of my bus pass, a portion of my bus fare, to get to this meeting that no longer exists. So that could break down that whole relationship um, between um, Peter and I. So resource mapping allows us to uh, work in creating those soft referrals for the individuals that we work with. Uh, the agencies um, that we work with when it comes to the resource mapping um, process. So we'll talk a little bit more about this, but I wanted to make sure to define soft and hard referral and also make sure that you understood the difference and gave you an example. So resource mapping also is extremely important if you are looking to integrate services within your agency. 
And when we talk about integrated services, we talk about all of the wraparound services that an individual can access to help them achieve financial well-being. By doing a resource map of your agency, but also those in the community, you're going to be able to identify where are those gaps. What are those gaps um, that exist in my, in my area? And so that's another important piece of resource mapping. The other piece of resource mapping is that it provides an opportunity for the blending and braiding of resources amongst a variety of organizations. Um, this resource mapping is also often done in youth transition programs, within school programs, um, community development programs, to really be, to be able to look at what are the gaps, <clears throat> but then what are um, the blending and braiding of resources um, that the different agencies can provide to help support the, the individual. The other thing is, is that it, some agencies have limited resources. Um, and so um, uh, this gives an opportunity where we can leverage um, a variety of resources to assist the individual. And again, as I mentioned, it assists in identifying the gaps within the community to assist individuals build their financial well-being. It also, as a financial coach, as an employment specialist, um, as a career counselor, a case manager, resource mapping also makes my job easier um, and enhances the placements and the outcomes that I'm working towards because I'm able to eliminate multiple barriers um, with the individual. So it also gives us that opportunity to make our job easier and to enhance um, the work that we're doing. So as, before we get into talk about how do we get started with creating a resource map, and we are going to do an interactive activity, so I hope everybody is ready um, or getting ready. Um, but if you're sitting there thinking, okay, this sounds great, um, I, I'm sold, I get the importance of this, how do I get started, and who should I be engaging? Well, before we get to the steps of how do we get started to create a resource map, I wanted to share with you who I believe should be engaged to complete a resource map um, for your area, your agency, or your community. First of all, all staff, if possible, should be engaged. Um, case managers, employment specialists, financial coaches, um, and possibly the individuals themselves um, as you put this together. Um, should be engaged to help with us. <clears throat> also, specific departments within the organization. So some organizations are, are very large, um, and so it might be um, each department working on a different piece and then bringing them all together. Um, but if only one department could do it, that, that would be um, fine too and important. It's also great if the organization um, as a whole would put together um, uh, the resource map um, for their, their area. And finally, um, resource mapping is a great activity to do with coalitions and to do with work groups. It's really important that multiple people are involved in resource mapping. And the reason being is that what I know may not be what my colleague knows. And um, so it's able to bring in those diverse ideas, those diverse conversations um, in creating the resource map. So multiple people should be engaged um, to complete the resource map for your area. All right, <clears throat> so how do we get started to do resource mapping? So what do we do? So, um, as I mentioned, we like to make things simple. Um, oftentimes, um, you know, as we go out in the field, and, and I can recall as a practitioner, I always like to simplify the process because I had multiple other things, uh, deliverables and activities that I had to do. And so um, we hope that um, the tool that we're going to share will help you simplify that. 
This handout will be distributed after the webinar with the recording as well as the PowerPoint presentation. Um, so sorry that uh, I did not send it out beforehand, but you are going to get a copy of it um, after the presentation. Um, so you'll have the, the tool, but we are going to demonstrate the tool, um, go over it with you um, right now. So before we get started, though, um, I have one more slide to go over, but what I would like to share is that I would encourage you that if you don't have a sheet of paper or a pen or pencil, um, I encourage you to get one. Um, so you can start jotting down some themes, some ideas as we move through the other slides. So when we look at resource mapping at the National Disability Institute, we look at five key strategies and uh, to financial stability. And these are our five key strategies that we focus on at the National Disability Institute. And oftentimes when groups do resource mapping, they might focus on just one particular topic, like financial education and financial coaching, or they might be focusing on free tax preparation and financial coaching, but maybe not public benefits and employment. And so we believe that when we do resource mapping, it's important that we look at all five key strategies and all of the resources and tools that are available for each of these five key categories. So oftentimes when we look at um, communities' resource maps that they've created, again, it might focus specifically on asset development resources and tools. That is great. That is a great tool to have um, uh, and have done the, the first step. But again, we like to encourage that you also go back and look at all of the public benefits, work supports, and employment financial education, financial education, and financial coaching that you can access. So really quickly, what I would like to share here is um, a brief overview of our five key strategies to financial stability. So first of all, we think it's really important for an individual, for us to assist an individual or for an individual to look at every single public benefit and work support that they could potentially be eligible for. And a work support are those, um, uh, any um, uh, additional support or subsidy that allows me or helps me maintain, obtain and maintain employment. And oftentimes we may not look at or know about all of those different work supports that are attached to the public benefit programs. So we encourage folks to look at all of those different pieces when it comes to public benefits and work supports. We then feel that that leads to better employment outcomes. It allows an individual to eliminate barriers to employment, but it also could potentially help an individual enhance their employment status, where I was working 20 hours a week, but now I can work 30 hours a week, or you know what, I can work full time. So we believe once we understand public benefits and work supports, it leads to better employment outcomes. The great thing about employment, when I have employment, I get to pay taxes. Um, and so we believe it leads, uh, an important piece of this strategy is to make sure that individuals understand about free tax preparation services, but most importantly, the most effective anti-poverty campaign set up by the federal government, the Earned Income Tax Credit. So as an individual moves through these three pieces and now has this great tax refund, um, how do they manage that money? And so we believe the next step is really looking at financial education and financial coaching to help an individual look at, now I have this additional resources, what do I do with it, okay? How do I save it? Do I pay down debt? What's, um, uh, what are some strategies that I should do with these funds? Um, do I need a car? Um, do I need to fix my car? Um, do I need new uniforms for work? A variety of things. But financial education allows us and helps us um, uh, to understand what to do with that. And so we believe that's the fourth key strategy, that individuals have to understand financial education, but also have access to a financial coach. And then finally, once we understand those four pieces, then it leads to opportunities to build assets. 
what are those assets that I want to build? Do I want to start my own business? Would I like to own my own home someday? Um, uh, <clears throat> would I like to go back to school? Um, whatever it is, it opens the door to asset development. And through each of these different categories, there are resources and tools under each of them that help me achieve um, uh, key pieces under each of these strategies which ultimately help me achieve my goal. If you want to learn more about the five key strategies to financial stability, um, uh, we have a couple webinars that we've done specifically on this topic that breaks it down um, even further. Um, We've also trained countless individuals across the country, um, service professionals, um, on these five key strategies and um, the different components. So there might be even some trainers in your local community that can um, uh, go over this and provide some more in-depth work with you on that if, if you're interested. <clears throat> so moving on to now how do we create resource mapping so this is a visual um, on the slide there's two pictures here this is what the resource mapping handout looks like um, and we're going to um, the next slides will have some images of it too um, but this is what you will have access to um, after today's webinar so let's get started and create a resource map for our community now this is where we want some participation okay so what i'd like for you to do is we want to look at each of these different categories and what i'd like for you to do is in the chat box um which let me fix this um in the chat box um as we go through each category and each step i want you to share what you think of for each topic what are specific pieces you think of for each topic so as we create a resource map the step one is we have to identify the resources and tools for each of the following strategies again these are the five key strategies <clears throat> so when you look at public benefits and work supports what are those resources and tools that you think of for public benefits and work support and I'd like for you to start putting in the chat box your ideas of what you see, uh, what you think of when it comes to public benefits and work supports. Excellent. So some nice answers are coming in. You think of, okay, so vocational rehabilitation, workforce centers. All right, so let's talk specifically, though, about public benefits and work supports. So when you think of public benefits, what public benefits do you think of? So I'll give you an example. SSDI, SSI, yes, perfect. That is an example of a public benefit, Social Security Disability Insurance, um, Supplemental Security Income, um, absolutely. So, um, oh, it says all participants is not an option, okay. Section eight, all right, so sorry, it looks like um, the chat box, the answers are unable to be seen by everyone. Actually, I think if you put all participants, on the send to box in the chat box, then um, you can select that and everybody can see your answers. So public benefits, section eight, public housing, absolutely. Another public benefit, VA benefits. So we wanna make sure we create a list of every public benefit and work support that we can think of, okay? Then the second one for employment, all right? So for employment, I know some of you have already responded to this. You said the workforce centers, you said vocational rehabilitation. Absolutely. Um, those are all opportunities or resources to help an individual when it comes to employment. So free tax preparation services. What do you think of when you think of free tax preparation services? FIDA, great. My free taxes, great, absolutely. So VITA stands for Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. So those are additional resources and tools as well. 
So when you think of financial education, what do you think of? And please add it to the chat box. Spending plans, developing a budget, credit unions. All right, absolutely. Needs versus wants, banking. Somebody said NDI. Thanks, Kiva. Actually, Kiva um, attended a, a training that I did, so um, a nice shout out. Thanks, Kiva. <laughs> um, Money Smart. Bank of America web-based tools. Okay, there's a variety of tools uh, and resources when it comes to financial education. So now when you think of asset development, what tools and resources do you think about? And please add it to the chat box. Credit building, oh, credit building absolutely. Georgia who also went through our work in Missouri. Yes, she said ABLE accounts, excellent. Yes, that is that asset development strategy, long-term investments, individual development accounts, yes, debt consolidation, is also part of financial education, um, helps the individual build assets, match savings, individual development accounts, excellent. Absolutely. So each of those are resources and tools that we um, that fall under each of these categories and there's a lot more right and so I just have some examples here that you've already said so as I start to fill in my resource map I sit here and I look at each of these different categories and as I look at these different resources and tools I start to look at is my agency providing support on public benefits and work support? Do we provide benefits counseling on SSI or SSDI employment? I'm not an employment agency, so do I know what the American Job Center is? Is that, when I have an individual that I'm working with about employment, who do I refer them to? <clears throat> so this opens up the door for us to start to think about what are all of those resources and tools that I need to access. But after we start to look at these pieces, it's important that we look at the uh, resources and tools for each of these strategies that are currently offered by our own organization. And that's, this is a really an important piece because if we're a large organization, often at times we may not know that another department is providing free tax preparation services. Or we may not know that this program provides SNAP or food stamp support to individuals. So it's important for us then to go um, and look at each of these different pieces and really to identify what is it that our organization offers. This also helps us identify what are the gaps, particularly if I'm looking to integrate financial capability strategies into my system, this will help me identify what those gaps are, all right? So just in the interest of time, we won't have you do the chat here, but let's go to the next piece that shows examples. So I put um, some examples here um, of an agency. So let's say that um, my agency is an American Job Center or One Stop Career Center. So in my job center, um, we provide benefits counseling. We have a benefits counselor on staff, let's say. We provide some job coaching. We also provide financial education, such as, let's say, better money habits. Um, so here I can see that, well, currently I don't, we don't offer anything when it comes to free tax preparation services and the earned income tax credit. We're not providing any asset development services at this time, or at least I don't think we are. So that would allow me to know I need to identify the resources and tools and the referrals to be able to refer individuals to free tax preparation and the EITC or any questions that come in on that or also asset development, okay? So step two to this process is to identify the resources and tools for each strategy that are currently offered by your organization, okay? 
So then step three um, is the final step. And so as we sit, we look at step one and step two and everything that we've identified so far in the handout. Then in these boxes, we need to identify providers in our community that support each strategy that's not supported by my own organization. And I gave the example of free tax preparation services. That is an example where I would need to identify and create that relationship to have a soft referral. I could call up that agency and say, I have an individual who hasn't done filed their taxes for the past two years. Do you know a place that I can send them so they can get their taxes completed free of charge? So again, I call up my friend who oversees the VITA program to say, hey, are VITA sites still available or where can I refer this individual? And then I can give that direct information to the individual so they can go and have this taken care of. Instead of just giving them a flyer where um, maybe on that promotional flyer, that free tax preparation site is no longer open. All right. So again, it saves that individual that step and that time to be able to do that. Okay. So step three is to identify the providers in your community that support each of the strategies not supported by your organization. So I'll give you an example. So here is um, some gaps that we identified for an organization um, here in the local area uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida. So exa the example is, is we needed to create a relationship with service source who is the WIPA provider. They provide the community work incentive coordinators um, on staff to meet with beneficiaries to talk about um, their public benefit programs and going back to work. And so um, this would be a place where in the past, I have not had a location to refer individuals receiving a SSI or SSDI, but that was a gap and I need to create that relationship to be able to refer them. Employment. Um, the, agency was not working specifically with the American Job Center, and so that was also uh, a gap. United Way serves as a gap uh, in the sense that, that they were providing the free tax preparation services as well as the asset development pieces as they are an individual development. Um, like they are the IDA provider for our local area. So. It's important that we also go back and look at the providers that each of these, um, that supports each of these activities where we can begin to build that relationship. So the final step here is to analyze all of the gaps and begin to create a strategy to learn more about those organizations that you may not be familiar with and to really identify how are there opportunities for us to blend and braid uh, services um, and resources. Is there an opportunity for us to create a smooth referral process or is there an opportunity where we could collaborate to create a one-stop shop or an integrated service delivery model to really help individuals achieve um, their ultimate goal. So that really is the final step. The other final step is it's implementing the resource map. Once you create the resource map, we don't want you to put it in a folder or put it on a shelf. Um, use it for your team as a constant tool to be able to update on a regular basis, but also to be able to um, continue to build um, those relationships. So before we give you an example of a resource map, I just want to close out with my portion just to talk about some resource mapping tips. So it is important to do the resource mapping activity with your colleagues and or other coalition members. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, this will provide diverse feedback, responses, and identify other resources that you may not be familiar with. It's also important to note that resource mapping takes time. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. I can do step one um, over a period of time, thinking of all of the different piece, uh, different categories or resources that I can think of for each of those areas. Um, um, 
and also it takes time in building those new relationships. So for an agency that may not have had a relationship with the American Job Center um, and identifying a key contact, it might take some time to identify who's the appropriate contact, who do I introduce myself to, um, uh, I, I, do I go and tour the location to learn more about it, how do I refer my customers there, et cetera. So resource mapping doesn't happen overnight, it does take some time. Um, the other thing is, is that um, a key piece to resource mapping is that creating new relationships is key and allows for soft referrals and the blending and braiding of resources. Um, and that's really the key piece, um, is how can we leverage the expertise? How can we leverage um, the focus or the mission of this organization um, with mine to be able to support the individuals that we all serve? So those are just a, full, a few uh, resource mapping tips. So again, resource mapping is something that we spend time on. It's something that we work with local groups on. Um, it a, a, can be a fun activity um, to be able to implement, to bring partners together to, if you don't have a coalition, to start a coalition or a work group to be able to look at it. Um, uh, but again, it helps to identify those gaps and really what those next pieces are that we need to work on and do. So with that, what I want to do is I want to turn it over to my colleague, Lori Schaller, who's the Manager of Financial Empowerment at the National Disability Institute. She too is a practitioner at heart um, and also um, comes from the, the, directly from the field as well. Um, and she too is a fan of resource mapping. And she's going to share with you an example of, uh, from the state of North Carolina um, of a project there. So with that, Lori, I would like to turn it over to you um, to talk about an example of a resource map. Thank you, Michael. Can you hear me? You're good. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we'll move forward. Uh, so uh, in North Carolina, uh, National Disability Institute has a project called Upward to Financial Stability. And we were working uh, with a number of organizations to provide financial education services uh, to agencies uh, that work with persons who have a disability. And um, we wanted to put together this resource guide and we're all strapped for time. And uh, the collaborative, Donna Gallagher, reached out and she found some volunteers through AmeriCorps VISTA to help with this initiative. And uh, one of Michael's first slides referenced um, addressing the five areas uh, when looking for resources in our community to uh, make sure that we're touching upon all the necessary elements. So, um, you know, when I think uh, all the different places that I've worked and you can probably think of the one person, too, that you can rely on who has that referral gene <laughs> that uh, you, you share with them that, you know, you've identified somebody who has this particular need in the community, and they always seem to know where that person can find those necessary resources. So you want to make sure that you include those persons in uh, preparing your community resource guide. So. Um, in 2015, we started this initiative in North Carolina with the Collaborative and North Carolina Council on Development of Disabilities and National Disability Institute. And we created this resource mapping guide for North Carolina. And this guide focuses on the five components of asset building. And this is available now in a hard copy so that Individuals can see it while they're waiting in a lobby to receive services uh, throughout the community of North Carolina. And um, it's also available, each of the partners who participated in this project have the link available so that um, uh, people can refer to this guide. And I just wanted to bring to your attention, it was neat to see all the different uh, elements that people thought of, you know, in, in the field of employment, uh, free tax preparation, financial coaching. Just to give an example, um, 
I'm involved with an AFP project. So we wanted to know who in North Carolina provides resources around assistive technology. So we knew that there was a demonstration project. We added those resources to this resource guide. Uh, we knew that there is an ATAP program that provides uh, the lending of assistive technology equipment um, that is used uh, to people who need that equipment. And many communities, for example, also have the AFP projects where the, a loan, uh, a financial component uh, is provided and made available in the community as well. So those who need to purchase new equipment or used equipment is not available, they can access an affordable loan in the community to uh, obtain that equipment. And the neat thing is when these tools are available online, you can do a search for like assistive, I can put it in this particular tool and I can find all the assistive technology resources available for residents of North Carolina. So that includes like the vocational rehabilitation might be able to help a person uh, obtain assistive technology. Uh, we, we reached out to national resources like the Job Accommodation Network so people can explore what assistive technology maybe exists to help them either at home or within the workplace and what maybe would be an accommodation that could work for a person um, as they're working to maintain their job. Um, there are specific uh, financial education uh, tools available for people who need assistive technology. So we include, and we included in this resource guide, the dollar and cents uh, program materials available through Georgia Tech. And uh, there's a national clearinghouse called Pass It On for used assistive technology that people can access uh, from any state. And we wanted to make sure um, in North Carolina, there's um, a, a very uh, rural communities uh, where uh, within the farming industry, people need access to assistive technology. So we made sure that we included a link to the AgriBility program as well. So you can really dig down uh, at the local level, level to find, you know, who is providing this service but to stretch out to the state and to the national uh, level to uh, leverage your local resources so, um, you know, you have the capacity to serve more. So we would like to welcome everyone to explore uh, this resource mapping guide for North Carolina, and that's available at www.cultureofsavings, all one word, dot org. And uh, we'll send out that information uh, with uh, the handout as well. So Michael and I wanted to invite any questions that may come to mind and um, we'll share responses. And please uh, put your questions to us in the chat box. Great, thank you. Um, thank you, Lori. Um, for sharing that information. Um, so we do have several questions that have come in and um, it looks like we have about five minutes to address questions and then we will close out. Um, so uh, if there's any additional questions, um, you can send them into the uh, uh, chat box um, <clears throat> and um, also to me via email and we will be able to, to do that. Now, I just want to clear to share also that in the example that Lori gave is that um, this is where they've done the resource mapping and they happen to turn it into a toolkit or into this guide. Um, but it, it can be done for the state, but it also can be done for the local communities um, and specifically for um, specific communities that um, you, you work with. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, so the point is I'm making is that it could be statewide, but it also could be um, uh, regional or it could be at the local, local level as you create your resource map. Um, so we do have several questions, so we'll get started and um, we have about five minutes to do this. And um, the first question is, is, it's a good question, but the question is why not use 211? 
So that's a great Very question. Good. So I'll start and then Lori, you could um, jump in and then sure. um, we can get through. So that's a great question. 211 is a great resource if your community has 211 available. But in some communities, 211 may not be as strong. The other thing is, is that um, uh, when you use 211, that's a great way to look to see the different groups that are providing the different services and to start to build those relationships. Um, but again, oftentimes 211, it's more of a hard referral. That I refer an individual to go to 211 to see if the service is available, they find the information, and then they go to it. And sometimes that information may not be updated because oftentimes it's the agency, not the provider of 211, that updates the information. <clears throat> So the agency may not have updated their information. So this goes a little bit deeper than what 211 is. All right? Lori, do you have anything else to add on that? Or um, uh, well, is that good? That, I, I think that was a great question. So this guide, that resource guide that was prepared for North Carolina, we were certain to share this with 211 so that they could update their information and uh, it provides a means for communicating um, and making sure that the resources are updated on a regular basis. Um, because, in a, you know, we inadvertently forget one component, and as that resource uh, comes into fruition, we want to make sure we have the ability to add that. So these uh, referrals and supports need to work together, and this is a way to enhance your local 211 uh, line. Um, so thank you. Great. So um, as a follow-up question to that is that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody asked what is 211? And so 211 is a resource um, that is available that lists um, social service agencies within an area. Um, some it could be state, it could be a regional 211, or it could be um, uh, local for a county or for a city. Um, so 211 is a service that's available pretty much throughout the United States, maybe not so much in rural communities, um, where you can call 211 and or look up 211 for your area on the internet, and it will give you a list of different resources. It's a great question. Um, Lori, just a follow up to what you were talking about, a question came in about what is AFP that you referenced? So if you could great. briefly share what that is, the acronym stands for. Sure. So that uh, refers to the Alternative Finance Project, and that is an affordable loan for the purchase of assistive technology. So. Uh, 35 states uh, nationally have this program available. And so an individual who may have a, a disability and wants to participate in uh, the Special Olympics may have the need for um, recreational equipment to be able to do that or to, uh, you know, be more active in their, their own recreation. Uh, so. You know, it's difficult to find funding for assistive technology for that purpose. You know, if somebody needs assistive technology for their education or within the workplace, uh, often uh, funding is available. But uh, in this case, the person may want a, uh, uh, a bicycle especially designed to meet their needs, and they could uh, obtain a loan through an alternative finance project in their community. So um, you want to make sure that you include assistive technology in your resource guide because that can really help to improve people's quality of life and uh, increase their productivity. And it can help to keep a senior uh, or a veteran um, within their home uh, longer in the community. And, and um, for youth going through uh, transition services, maybe graduating from high school, going into a college program, uh, they may have a great need for assistive technology. So to find those resources in your community, and uh, that's, that's important. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. 
All right, so we got to do a speed round here because we okay. won't be able to get through all of the questions here. So, um, so I'll take one and then we'll have you take it to um, okay. can address one. So um, the next question is, what is the average time it takes a group to create a resource map? Um, the answer is it really depends on you. It depends on um, uh, how many people you have engaged. Um, you know, uh, so it really depends on, on you. Um, for some groups, it could take um, a month. For some groups, they really dive into it uh, and take a little bit, go a little bit deeper, and it could take them up to six months um, to be able to do. So the thing is, is the tool is very flexible. As you see, um, it's a very easy tool to use um, to help you organize your resource um, map. So the next question is, how often do you update the resource map? Lori, do you want to take that one? Sure. So I just uh, prepared uh, resource uh, guides for two states associated with assistive technology. So uh, the last two days I attended a conference for assistive technology. So um, usually I update those guides on a quarterly basis. So now I have such an influx of new information, we'll be updating that uh, in the next week. So certainly a hard copy of a resource guide uh, maybe would be done less often, but when the resource guide is available uh, digitally, available online, uh, the means to update that can occur more frequently. So that's great. Great, thank you. All right, so this is our last question and then we need to close out and I will take this one. So how do we get buy-in from leadership of our organization that this is important? You know, that's a really good question. And the thing is, is that um, it's important to share how this will help to achieve employment outcomes, placement outcomes, um, and help eliminate the barriers, um, potential barriers that individuals are experiencing um, where our organization isn't providing those services. But a resource map also um, allows the opportunity to potentially blend and braid resources. So I provide this resource, our agency can do this resource uh, or this um, uh, activity, but this agency can provide um, another, another one as well. So um, the person who asked that question, please feel free to reach out to us um, at ask, A-S-K at N-D-I dash I-N-C dot O-R-G, and we'd be happy to give you some additional strategies. Um, on that. Thank you, Nikia, for adding that into, um, into the chat box. So um, uh, we have additional questions, so we will um, also try to put those together and address them um, and send them out as well. Um, as we close out today, I want to thank Lori Schaller for uh, presenting and sharing some information. I want to thank my colleague, Nakia Matthews, um, for um, her uh, support in putting today's uh, activity together. I'd also like to thank the entire training and technical assistance team at the National Disability Institute who are um, uh, also doing resource mapping on a regular basis um, and looking at different resources that our partners can, can access. Um, and so I thank them for all of the work that they're doing. If you're not a part of the Real Economic Impact Network, please join us, go to our website, and you can um, access, uh, find out more information. If you have questions and strategies to build the financial well-being or wellness of persons with disabilities, you can send your questions to ask at ndi-inc.org, and um, they will be uh, addressed by a technical assistance team member at the National Disability Institute. I hope that you'll join us on July 26 at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, you can get more information. We'll be on our website in the events section um, for a webinar called Integrating Financial Education into the American Job Centers. Um, if you're an American Job Center or a workforce development organization and want to learn um, some simple steps to integrate financial education into your uh, delivery of services, please join us for this particular webinar, July 26th. Also on August 10th, we will have a webinar with um, looking at exploring alternative credit reporting options to help individuals build credit. Um, and our presenters will be members of the team from Credit Builders Alliance. 
And finally, please check us out on our website, but also in the various social media channels um, as well. I want to thank you all so much for joining us for this afternoon and um, to learn more about resource mapping. If you have questions on resource mapping, please send us an email. If you um, need assistance, have some questions send us an email. We're here to assist you and to help you. Um, and I want to thank each of you for making a real economic impact um, in the lives of individuals with disabilities um, and their families. So with that, thank you all so much for attending and have a great day.